Hello YouTube fans, it's Brad um, with a situation I ran into with my flash triggers and I wanted to do a little video of what I found and, uh, and this video is really about using a light meter to set up your TTL flashes I mean your TTL triggers to be able to read your TTL triggers which I come to find out is a real issue because of something called a pre-flash from the TTL triggers that I use. I started out with these first cheap triggers, these one son, they work fine uh, triggers. Uh, they work just great when using a light meter. There's no pre-flash. Uh, they're totally manual. The only thing about these I'm just going to mention real quick is that when you use these, um, they tend to, when the flash goes to sleep, your, your flash, so I guess if you can set it to not go to sleep on you, but if you're using multiple flashes, especially, it tends to be a problem. And your flash unit goes to sleep as you're sitting up, uh, the family that you're shooting and you're changing things. When you go to take the next picture, the flash is, one of them is always sleep or two of them might be sleep. So when you go to, when you trigger, and this, this unit is on top of your camera, when you trigger the flash, a couple of flashes aren't going to go off. So what I found that when I get everybody, if I resituate people or re, uh, set up my scene, I need to press this button first, right before I even put the camera up to my eye, press that button and trigger the flashes and all the flashes will wake up so that my next shot everything will be uh, all, all the uh, speed lights will go off and that's all I'm gonna say about those but they work fine but you have to look out for that the next flash the triggers excuse me that I purchased was these newer CN I mean NW-RC 10Ns these I, I really like these these are great too um, these are TTL flashes um, they I mean triggers they work up to one eight thousand of a second so if you're doing high speed sync and stuff outdoors or whatever uh, these are great the only thing that I've noted about these I did a, a little shoot and I was using three um, triggers um, with three different light sources is that and I believe it's the batteries which is the issue that these you need to use 1.5 volt batteries with them you need to use regular alkalines alkaline batteries don't use rechargeables which I think was the actual problem that I was having with these other than that they work great they don't go if the flash goes to sleep uh, as soon as you put your finger on your you know to focus they, these wake right up so you don't have your flashes asleep. I think my problem was when I did that shoot is that the 1.2 volt rechargeable batteries, these aren't designed for it. I think you have to use 1.5 alkaline batteries in these in order to uh, make them, because sometimes one of them wouldn't, or two of them wouldn't, wouldn't fire. So Now this is the new system that I've come up with that I purchased and I really do like these a lot the young new YN 600N uh, this is the version 2 and uh, these are great I, I really absolutely love the system but here's what these this system and this system have in common they have a pre-flash before they flash and if you're using or if you like to use uh, a, a, a light meter and you like to sit your flashes up so that there's no differential you sit your flash up you meter it uh, and everything's consistent if you use TTL you know you back up you move it's on a different thing it's, it's, it's TTL just keeping that in mind which is not a bad thing but if you want to keep everything consistent you need to uh, you, you want to even using this get it in manual mode and set the flashes up so they remain consistent but then how do you know what is the your your ratios or what is the output and you know if especially if you're setting up your camera in manual which you know you should probably be doing 
and you set your, your aperture and your shutter speed and, and your ISO to manual to get make sure to find out where that proper exposure is. Um, these will not allow in manual mode for you to meter because when it when it triggers the flash, there's a pre-flash and your meter is going to read some weird number, kind of like what's there right now, 1.8. And you know that your f-stop should be somewhere around 5.6 or 6.3 because you know the output that that flash is putting out is not at 1.8. Matter of fact, if you set your camera to what that meter reads, if you can get it there, if you have a, a lens can go to 1.8, it's going to be totally blown out because again these two units have a pre-flash now I really like these but I really wanted to use my meter so I really it took me an evening of working with this and the next morning I'm laying in bed and I kinda got an idea even after searching on the internet all over the place and I come to run across people are dealing with the same issue with a pre-flash situation when you're working with the meter and not being able to meter your lights uh, what I came up with was to first you need to put your meter I'm start with the meter you need to get it stationary you need to get it in one position somehow I put a little cold shoe thing on the back of here and I can uh, that locks onto one of my light stands on a light stand uh, and that's how I set my meter up and I just press the button and I meter um, that needs to be stationary and you also need to get your camera and put it on a tripod and meter uh, a, tr a tripod so that it's pointing at your light meter sorry come down pointing at your light meter and everything remains stationary there's a big reason that you need to do that and I mention it now because what you're going to use to try to figure out and fine tune your your outputs from your flashes you're going to have to use your histogram. You're going to have, you're going to, have to use this histogram to fine tune it and make sure those light put outputs are the same and, and you'll see why here in a minute. So the way we do this, the way I came up with, like I said, you set all this up, you take your flash, you have it on your receiver, you have your uh, transmitter or control unit here, on your flash unit, you got this on a light stand. You got your again your camera on a tripod. You got this on a light stand or however you can get it to not move. Once you do that, you take your flash. You turn it on here, and you put it in manual mode. While I'm at this point, let me mention this, is that there's a big difference between the uh, Nikon and the Canon version of these 622s. And you can read about that yourself, but the Canon has a better system of dealing with manual mode. I'm just going to say that and I'm going to move on. But you, you put this in manual mode. Now you can trigger, within manual mode there is no pre-flash. Let me say that. That's why you're putting your flash in manual mode. You set it at what you want to set it at. So you say this one set at half power and say you know you get 5.6 or whatever you want to get. Take a couple pictures, 5.6, but make sure you note uh, once you know your meter, that, that's what your meter is saying, 5.6. You got your camera set at 5.6, ISO 100, whatever your meter is telling you to do, and you're looking at your histogram. Once you get your histogram, now you got to set your flash to TTL. Now note in the Nikon system, th this system, you have to keep the flash in TTL all the time whether you are using this in manual mode, TTL mode, or whatever mode that you switch your transmitter, I mean your your control unit in, the flash on the Canon on the Nikon system has to always be in TTL. Let me say that. 
So now you're back to TTL. You have this. I'm going to go back to this manual again. Oh, come on. Get this to wake up. Remember, this is set at half power. Now, we're going to say manual and we're going to say one half power. Oh, going the wrong way. Half power. So we got that flash in this at one half power. Now you take another picture. Because you already know that the meter has told you that you're getting 5.6 at one. Because when you, when you, when you trigger it this time, in this mode, this meter is not going to read anything. Your light meter is not going to read anything. Well, it is going to read. It's going to read something like 1.2, 1.8, and you know that you were just getting 5.6 because 5.6 because the reason it's not reading because there's a pre-flash and it's picking up that pre-flash before the primary flash because that's what the trans these transmitters do. So you trigger. You got it set at one half power. You look at your histogram. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. You look at your histogram and you'll be kind of looking at a peak because it's usually kind of there's a peak right here. I wonder if there are any. Uh, no, I'm not going to. Well, we'll use that one. Yeah, we'll use this one. The peak that you got and how far in the in the in the shape of it that you had when you were in manual mode, you want to make sure that this looks the same. So if that peak moves over to the right a little bit, because it's, it's gonna have the same shape because remember again you have everything set up on a tripod. You got your light meter, nothing's changed over there where your light meter is because you have it set up on a stationary position. So if that moves over a little bit to the right, you know that your light, your flash is putting out a little bit over. And you can actually see it in the photo itself. If you're looking closer at the photo, if the photo is a little brighter, your histogram is a little bit further to the right. You know you need to make an adjustment. What I did was I made that adjustment here on here and what I come to find out and I have to I have what five different speed lights and they're all different I have a SB 600 SB 700 800 I have a, a Shaney and I have an Altura they're all different outputs when it comes to what you know at, at a half power I just put it that way they have different outputs so what I did was once I found got the histogram to look exactly the same as it did that I had metered at 5.6 I made that adjustment here so I'm sorry so it was a half power so let's say if I say oh, half power Oh, there we go. That was doing it right. Half power, and you say it was over, so we need to come down a third of a stop. Okay, that's down one third. It says plus seven. So I had to come down because remember the histogram moved over to the right a little bit. So I'm going, I'm putting out a little bit too much light, and I need to get it back here. Once I've got that fine tuned. What I did was I took a little, you know, one of those little label gun that prints out labels, prints out labels, and I said, okay, now when I have this flash and I meter everything in manual mode, I need to make sure to take off 0.3. So a third of a stop minus a third of a stop that will give me the exact same output as it the flash will give me the same exact output as it did when it was in manual mode because believe me they're not going to put out the same output I'm going to start over again and come back to the beginning when this flash is in manual mode 
and you set it to one half power. There we go. You set it to one half power and you trigger it in manual mode. When you go back to TTL and you tell this to one half power, gosh, I got it set out of fourth. <laughs> so it would have been that's the proper setting. But when you go back to TTL and now you're operating off of your head unit, you're going to be one half less, one third stop. And all my flashes have that little label on there to tell me, okay, this is the differ differential between what manual on the flash was and what this unit says it's supposed to be. I still got that down again too. Well, that's right. One quarter and three quarter. Uh, I'm tripping. One quarter and seven thirds. It's down by one third. Okay. So I just kind of wanted to bring that up. I'm sure, hopefully, I know that it's clear as mud. And I do apologize if it's that bad. But if you ran into this issue, again, with these TTL type flashes, and you're trying to use a light meter, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you. And if you try it, you see that that will actually work to get uh, so that you're able to use your light meter. If there's another way to do this, guys, somebody let me know because <laughs> I could not find it after reading forums online and going back and forth. I couldn't find any way to uh, get this light meter to read this unit because there is a pre-flash. As a matter of fact, I think it said that in the instructions. And then I actually I sent a email to Young New and ask them about it and <laughs> I have the email still and they said no you can't uh, there's a pre-flash so there's not really a way to meter that and I'm just gonna put it in just short terms that's basically what they were telling me also if someone has an idea of how to use my uh, light meter to trigger to trigger the uh, young new flash uh, before I'm just gonna bring this back up going back to these real cheap ones it was a great system I had one of these uh, and I had it mounted on the back of here I forgot how I did it oh, well I had it mounted on the back velcro on the back of that and I used a little output into there and I could when I pressed the button it would trigger the flash which was great I could go over standing where I wanted to meter press the button this would send a signal to the trigger the trigger would go off BAM I'm hoping maybe to come up with a transmitter I don't know whether it's the what is it called the little the 602 603 transmitter. I don't know whether whether taking one of those and putting it on here uh, would transmit a signal to trigger the flash units or not uh, to make to, to trigger the triggers or not. But again, if you have an idea about that, let me know. I know I've rambled on. Hopefully, there, there's some information there that's usable to someone. Yeah, have a great Fourth of July.